So well, um, this is a, we have this on, as a joint meeting. So I'm just going to take two seconds and call the Conway Select Board to order. So there we go. Sure. Sure. Um, so that's that's that. OK, um, <laughs> two seconds. But, um, so thank you very much for um, for talking to us. Um, I believe one of our members, Erica Goldman, um, won't be long on this call because she has a prior commitment at seven. But um, Okay. What what I was hoping to achieve, and if, if it's okay if I just start, Caroline. Um, no. Oh, oh yeah. Go ahead, Phil. Uh, is is just sort of the, my conversations with both you and Trevor. If we could just have those again with the select with the rest of the select board and with um, Veronique and um, Adam Reed is also on. He's the assistant to the town to the town administrator, um, and so because this is this is information that I didn't know before. And this is a direction that I have, uh, I was very intrigued and, um, but I wanted to get all of us in Conway on the same, uh, I don't know, the same wavelength. So, um, and, and uh, I realized you were far more coherent in your conversation than I was in my ability to repeat your conversation. So, um, well, uh, it's because um, I've been around for a long time, Phil. <laughs> Um, my first event was in 2005, uh, upper road collapsed, Mill Village was falling into the, Mill Village Road was falling into the river, and the sewer treatment plant was, uh, in front of the sewer treatment plant was caving in um, to the river. So, um, that I didn't know what to do, really, and um, we were trying to get someone to come, and you must realize that this was in 2005, this was the year of Katrina, there was FEMA was a wreck. There wasn't really much infrastructure for re emergency response at that point. Uh, but Greenfield had people in that trailer park got washed away. They had they had people in the shelter for like two or three weeks. We couldn't get anyone out here from the state. Uh, it was it was terrible. And the only person that came was the, was a district conservationist with NRCS. Natural Resource and Conservation Service. And that's how I got involved with the Conservation District because they literally handheld my um, hand through the entire response. We've had, over the years, we've had millions and millions of dollars worth of damage here in the town of Deerfield with flooding and um, washouts. And the town has paid very little. And, you know, we have about an 18 to $20 million loss right now, more than Irene, more than what we had in Irene. Mm -hmm. And it is overwhelming, but you just got to be calm, just like all the damages that you all have. Um, you have to do response in phases and it's a little bit at a time. And so your first response is, emergency stabilization and getting the roads back open so you can get emergency vehicles, ambulances, fire trucks, police to people and people can get out and, and resume their regular day. So this in Deerfield of our 20 million, 4.7 million is probably what it will take to, to get us ready for the winter. Okay, so what you all, I don't, I don't really know how you're looking at your damages, but if you, you have to look at it in like a three phase thing, you have your emergency, like I said, stabilization, get the roads open, then you have fix it the way it was which got washed out. So that's not really where you want to go, but that's part, it's beyond emergency stabilization. And then you have the resiliency. Your recovery on any event like Irene or this event for us is a three to five year process. You cannot get freaked out that it's going to take three to five years, but that's how you're going to end up with 18 or $20 million reinvested in your town infrastructure that you as taxpayers in town haven't paid for. Um, what? So the first process, I guess I would say, is you need to come up with your emergency stabilization response oh, road opening, uh, uh, you know, amount. What is that amount? That has got to go to Palmark. 
I have right. not heard him being responsive to you at all. Joe, Joe Comerford and Natalie Blay have been in our town multiple times to our July 10th event, our July 16th event, and our July 21st event. They've been had staff here, they had people here. I, I don't know really what Paul has done in your town, but he needs to get on the hook and you need to sort them out. Yes, for Veronique. Hi, I just wanted to say that actually they've been incredibly responsive. Um, oh, good. Great. Paul, yeah, good. yeah, very much so. Paul's been here, Natalie's been here multiple times driving the roads. Awesome. Um, okay. And we've had many, many, you know, other legislators here. So yeah, they've been great. wonderful. That's great. Good. So then what you need is, do you have your opening amount? What, how do you get your roads open? Do you know what your, that amount is, that dollar? 3.9, 3. almost 3.9 for the, 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 for the tenth, it was like 400 and something thousand. And for the 21st, it was three point, I mean, uh, two, yeah, 3.4 something. Yep. Now, um, do, you, do you have that number to, to MEMA and FEMA right now? We, we do. The deadline was Monday, um, right. and, and that so and we and we got the uh, approval to spend that amount in deficit, which yep. is which is not uh, not my desired outcome. Of course, that's one of the reasons why we're here because uh, FEMA, MEMA, governors, the, the absence of the governor's disaster declaration, er, the absence of Biden's de disaster declaration. Um, uh, you know, I don't. I'm 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 looking for alternatives, and uh, in our but, in our conversation, you flesh alternatives. You need to get that amount. That's cash. There's nothing you can do about that. You need that cash to be coming from the state. Yeah. So, what we need to do is towns as we join together and we start saying, you know, talk to the Senate President Karen Spil Spilka and say, we just like for the farmers we need X number of dollars for our communities. And if it's just, if it's 3.9 for you and it's 4.7 for, for, for us, we already have a huge chunk. And, and that's what we need. Berkshire towns and there was Berkshire towns that had additional damage. So combined, that's what we need cash, okay? Now, worst case scenario in my mind is that they're going to do a supplemental budget and we'll get our money, okay? But that's not until October. And what we need to do is we need to keep hounding them to see if they could do a special deal where they can give us some storm damage money so that we don't have to borrow money to um, do those kind of repair, pay for those kind of repairs, okay? Mm -hmm. Then the next level your of response is w what was there replacing what was there and protecting what was there and that's your emergency watershed protection program through the natural resource and conservation service okay that is a fantastic program like i said in 2005 uh they we we did um mill village we did in front of the sewer treatment plant uh, we didn't get help for Upper Road, but um, through that program. But those two projects were well over a million and a half dollars each, and um, they not a, a rock or a section of that was was hurt in Irene or the terrible right. flooding of two thousand of of the tenth, the sixteenth, or you know last July of twenty one or. Because it you was know, kind of resilient. It's it's it was built out correctly, and those are the kind of things that you want. That uh, what that does is um, you don't need a declared event because it's unlikely we're going to get a declared event from FEMA and MEMA. And the reason why is because um, they're looking at this as July 10th, 16th, and 21st as three different events. We're not going to get enough money to meet the threshold. Threshold, mm -hmm. even though I think one of the other things you got to do in this emergency part is to um, survey your citizens. We, we put in a couple hundred thousand dollars, as you know, because people's driveways washed away, and I mean, yeah. just on Upper Road, I know there's at least three driveways that got really damaged, but um, that I was driving by constantly, but. 
all over town, there was small damage. It's not going to do much, you know, we're not sure if there's going to be any dollars for that. But you all, as when I was talking to Phil, you all have substantial personal private yeah. damage. Yes. So every single person is, is that goes to FEMA and MEMA uh, because there might be help. There isn't a lot of help if it's not a declared emergency up front. You need to tell people that. But you need to put that dollar amount to MEMA and FEMA because the state might do some kind of special package of, of some portion of that loss and they'll need receipts. And so you got to, people need to document what they're doing. And what I did is I talked th through Phil on his own personal situation where the water was whooshing through, you know, you can't, you just have to put an estimate out, but you never get somebody to come look at your foundation without for five for less than five thousand, and the water was going through the foundation. You know, you had oil tanks that uh, tipped over, and you got cleanup boilers and boilers for a big old house, and and uh, electrical panels that you might want on the first floor instead of in the basement. So that's going to be some electrical, you know, um, reconfiguration. All those things, when you add them up, you're over fifty to 75,000 already. So you just need ballparks from all estimates from all your people that um, were damaged so that you can get that out to the um, MEMA people too. And to Joe and Paul and, and Natalie so that they know that maybe you can only get 25% and you gotta have you know, uh, some receipts. But if you replace your boiler, Phil, you know you're going to have a receipt for that. So, uh, be, you know, hold on to your receipts and see if there's going to be something in the state budget for something like that. Okay. Um, okay. No, go. Oh, so anyway, back to the EWP after you've done the personal damage part and get that down there. Um, the EWP does not need a declared event which in our case is perfect. So that means any event that we have, any rainstorm or high water event in the rivers, you can have them come out to your town. And the state engineer, Darren Davis, is really, really nice. And he'll help you put together, can you do this? I mean, I would look at Field Hill Road, who, which is, oh, you know, that was a wreck. So what do you need to do to fix that so it doesn't wash out in the next storm event. Um, and so you would have him come out. They used to, in 2005, there was a lot more staff in state so you could get the design done here. But Darren and his staff will take all the measurements and do all the stuff on site. And then they do the design work in Texas now, but they do wonderful design work still. So what happens is the front loading of any project, you know, is permitting and um, design, which is like 40 to 50% of every project. So if you don't have to front load that, and then they pay 75% of installation, that's a fantastic win-win for you as a community, because you're going to get it put back correctly and engineered to withstand the next storm event. And it has to happen within 220 days because it's done under emergency. So it's wicked fast. You can do it right away. Uh, we have we have River Road, we have Little Meadow Road, we have Pine Nook Road, we have um, a couple places on Lower Road that that have um, landslide kind of issues. So we have several projects. We hope that will. Um, be eligible for EWP. Um, I had a meeting. Uh, EWP is not front, front loaded uh, from NRCS's point of view. I had a meeting of the Northeast uh, Conservation Group on Monday. Uh, it was the earliest I could get the group together, but um, everyone supported, voted, and supported um, getting their congressional um, delegation to support funding EWP because Vermont, of course, was devastated. There was yeah. 
damage in New Hampshire and Western Maine and New York State. And so a um, couple of years ago, the West Virginia had terrible mm -hmm. uh, raining uh, issues and they used a lot of EWP. So they getting their delegation together for us and everybody is supportive of making this funding available immediately. So that's really good news. Um, you've had a lot of work done in the South River by the FERCOG and some of the work has been done by best practices through NRCS again. So there's a lot of information there that might, if there was damages along the South River, you might be able to get some funding for that kind of stuff. For It's for erosion. It's, um, it's relieving anything that's imminent to life and property, which is a pretty big uh, definition. So if you can think that it's your property damage or your life, you know, your house or person's life, roads, those things all included. Um, it's infrastructure recovery, which means that anything that they will protect, they will, they'll figure out a way to protect your infrastructure. And that was why I was thinking of Field Hill Road, because, um, you know, that washed out quite a bit, and then you restored it so people can go up and down. But, you know, it's not, it's not stable enough to last you know, for uh, even through the winter, maybe, you yeah. know, who so knows? Can we let Veronique ask? Oh, yes, Veronique, go ahead. You're muted. Sorry, yeah. Um, well, I did want to mention that we have talked to um, uh, EWP. Actually, they're probably going to be here on Friday. Shelburne Falls Road is one of the ones that we're really concerned about. Um, and I feel till too. But um, my understanding, and maybe you can clarify this for me, is that when it comes to private um, damages, the town has to be like a partner or a support with that. Can you maybe explain that a well, little more? What it is, is um, they do a damage survey report to show that you're eligible for the program. And they'll give you an estimate of the project, say it's a million dollars. They pay 75%. So there's a, a a difference of 250,000, say, in the project. What we've done in the past is it's easier to go through the conservation district as a sponsor, because the when when Irene happened, it, you know, the towns were overwhelmed, and like Ashfield had a house that was going in the river, and so from a private point of view, the conservation um, district worked with that homeowner. And the difference was, I think, $16,000 or something. Uh, they were armoring the bank by the house, so the house didn't tip in the river. And the difference between the complete installation was like $16,000. And so the um, conservation district worked as the sponsor, was the sponsor with the homeowner, and we just figured out how the homeowner was going to pay the $16,000 and paid the conservation district and the conservation district paid the EWP program um, when the grant got in. And what will happen, uh, we have already requested help from um, EWP program. And what will happen is we got to figure out once the estimate of the project amounts are, all we have to do as a town is just say that we're going to pay the match and then we have to come up with a way to cover the match. And like Little Meadow Road is next to Deerfield Academy and it's the main sewer line to Deerfield Academy. So hopefully Deerfield Academy will pick up the difference for us in Little Meadow Road. Similarly, High Nook is next to Eagle Brook School. So if we have an EWP project on Pine Nook Road, Eagle Brook will pick up the difference. But that's for us to get cash from them, um, not our taxpayers, um, based on where the project is. On the if roads, that's, we'd obviously have or to pay. if right, if if that's what's going to happen, uh, you just have to figure out where you're going to get um, the match, and the match can be the difference between what we get from our state legislators and what we've already invested in our roads for emergency 
the, so, the, okay. The other thing that I wanted to mention, the other program which we're doing now, uh, because we have a sewer system, we're doing a um, asset management plan to look at uh, all the sewer pipes in town. We did that before, before we started our large project, but they're also... Um, the state revolving fund is has a, a a grant program where you can get up to 150,000 to do um asset management of stormwater i don't know if the it's like getting close to the close on the application process but um, you know there might be another one next year or I, i'm not sure what the time frame is but we're um you know we're going to have a uh, we put in for a grant to assess all of our stormwater. So any kind of catch basins and culverts and um, manholes, all that kind of stuff, we're hoping to get listed into a plan. So we'll have at least a, a document. And, you know, FERCOG did a lot of um, culvert we have, work for us. We have a culvert us. plan. The culvert okay. plan. And, and we're hoping to tie it all together so we can get a good understanding of what what is undersized, what do the pipes look like, they'll run cameras through the pipes and um, and and put all this into a large book or obviously on um, digital database as well that we could we could kind of have a good understanding of what's failed, what's old, what needs to be redone, what should we up, you know, increase any of the pipes that we're replacing because they were washed out, we're trying to do with larger stuff as well, they're trying to deal with, you know, the amount of water that's coming seems like every week, but um, so that that's a program you know that might be available if you wanted to to take a look at that as well v vernique did you have another question um yeah thank you i i was just curious if because i know you know we have roads that we use in common and is there any area where our two towns can apply for things jointly yeah yes well this is where the resiliency part comes in and this is where it gets to be the dragged out part of the recovery but the important part of that is is you are looking for hazardous mitigation grants or the brick grant which is building uh resiliency, resiliency infrastructure. infrastructure and communities and um the brick grant is is fairly competitive um, a hazardous mitigation grant is a separate pool of money, and that's national. BRIC is a national mm -hmm. competitive grant. The hazardous mitigation grants are from the state, um, and that pot of money varies from year to year. That depends on how many federally declared emergencies, and it's like 10% of the money. So if we had like $2 billion of like pandemic uh, declaration, then you're going to get 200 um, million in the uh, pot for hazardous mitigation, that kind of thing. So um, it's usually 75%, again, 75%. So you have to look where are you going to make up that 25% in kind. And that's the one other thing I just want to go back to the EWP. EWP is very, very good about in-kind services if you have you know highway department um participation in anything it counts towards your 25 percent, which is really important and we've been able to um make a huge difference in the contribution amount because of our uh participation of the highway department um so anyway the resiliency is a one-time fix in other words you're doing you're upgrading your culverts you're figuring out how you're going to do stuff, um, and and so it's a you don't have to go back and do it. Um, MVP, we've done culverts replaced through the MVP program. Um, we had a horrible contractor for Kelleher Drive, but we did get a finally you know we, they did pay for an open bottom culvert there. We had an open bottom culvert on Mill Village that was paid for by MVP program. Um, we uh, and that was. Uh, like four years ago, mm -hmm. but I mean, that was from Irene. The other one on open bottom culvert on um, Mill Village was also from Irene, but uh, we the conservation district paid for that through fines that were deep from DEP. They gave uh, the conservation district money. So we were able to buy um, open bottom culvert for Mill Village. Both of them work beautiful. Um, you know, in all these storms, and um, we hope to never have to really do anything more with them. And that's the kind of thing that you want to be able to do is have built in that resiliency. 
The other thing that we did from Irene is uh, the conservation district um, has a work group called Creating Resilient Communities, which um, I chair. We've been meeting since December of 2011. Uh, it's the 20 communities up and down the Deerfield River plus um, Vermont. Uh, we work with our sister conservation district, Wyndham County Conservation District in Vermont. And we have federal and um, state partners at the table. And what we've done from Irene was we adopted the Vermont, we had Vermont come down and show us and convince this mass DOT um, that their rivers and road standards were really great. And the mass DOT adopted those standards. Then they did trainings here in town. Uh, the conservation district did trainings. We've had field geology come in and show our highway departments how rivers move. Um, and that is was great. But the next stage that will be really mindful for all of us is we're going to put together a training, hopefully um, when Vermont is able to recover, um, is they have essentially had mud season nine months of the year because of warming of winters. And they've come up with a technology of bio um, fiber technology that they put down on the roads. It's essentially eliminated mud season, but it also has stabilized the roads. And they and the, and the upside of it is that they've had far few, I mean, far less washouts because of the drainage and compaction. I have not taken any trainings, so I'm not sure how the technology works, but as a creating resilient communities, we're gonna get Vermont to come down. We'll do some kind of demonstration. Hopefully Mass DOT again will buy into it and we'll be able to do some kind of replacement on our roads. And then so Kevin, I'm gonna Carol, turn it over yeah, to Kevin. Carolyn is talking about gravel roads, correct? Yes. Yeah. And I'm gonna turn it over to Kevin to talk about, hopefully that would be the ideal thing to do would be to get replacement of our common roads with this new technology. But- Matthews. Uh, Matthews and Hoosick Road and that kind of thing. But I'm gonna turn it over to Kevin so he can talk about trying to work together with you. Um, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, hopefully, basically, where we're at is, is we're just trying to go ahead and Matthews Road has been, for the most part, been put back together. Uh, that was one of our main focuses in the beginning of trying to stabilize uh, roadways because we knew when 116 being out, that was your your main way in and out. Uh, we were very fortunate. We were able to get uh, contractor Cocot in there, and they, they worked tirelessly for a couple of days to make sure that that road was opened up. Um, Hoosick, Hoosick's a little bit different story. Um, it's going to take a little bit more time. I have received some uh, some quotes on it. Um, I'm still waiting on at least one more quote. That way I can stay within the radar of the uh, auditors when they come in the spring. <clears throat> um, like I said, there, there's a couple different options we're looking at there. Um, but we're definitely trying to make sure that this gets done within the next 30 days. And that way I stay within my emergency and, and we're able to um, get that road open back up again. Um, when Carolyn was talking about the what, uh, excuse me, Vermont does, uh, they got a fantastic system up there. They they finally got it figured out, <clears throat> and uh, it'd be nice for us to be able to uh, get what they've already figured out. You know, um, if if you want to talk about some place that that's got mud season, um, that's Upper Vermont, and you know, it's almost like uh, tundra, whatever that stuff is up in Alaska, where it's it's, it's just soft all the time. Um, so that's basically where, where we're at as far as those couple roads, you know, the other two roads, dirt roads that I have that I have issues with um, presently right now, they both go into Shelburne. Um, so that doesn't affect um, obviously Conway at this point in time, but we're, we're getting there, you know, it's, it's been, it's been a hell of a pull. Um, you know, it's, it's, it's devastating. You know, there's a lot that both of our towns went through. Obviously you guys have, um, you know, the fortunate of being able to be called uh, the most water in one month in the entire country and Canada. That's um, and That's I think we were like three or four or something like that. Um, but long story short is, is you know, um, uh, Ron, you know, Ron's been like, you know, going absolutely crazy trying to make sure that he gets his stuff done. Um, and, and just I just hope people understand that there's so much devastation in both of our towns that they got to give us a little bit of leeway to get things opened up, um, you know, you got somebody that's complaining about three inches of water in their their garden compared to you know i've, I've got a road that's completely washed out and i've got 15 people that can't get fire police or in a mess um 
obviously those are, are what we need to look at. Unfortunately, um, we're open. Everything is open now where everybody's able to get to where they need to get to. Um, but they just may take a long way around. You know, we've got lower road, which again, really doesn't. It's going to kind of affect you a little bit. because <clears throat> I know a lot of people utilize Hoosick Road. <clears throat> Once Hoosick's open back up again, you know, definitely uh, uh, lower road should be opened up because I know everybody uses that as their cut through to go up to Greenfield. Um, so that, that's basically what we're trying to get to. Um, it's it's going to be a little bit of a haul. You know, like Carolyn says, you know, the, the four is to get us back to where we were for the most part. Yeah. And, and the extra is going to be to to get us where we need to go to. So. I think I think the main thing too is uh, is just my nervousness is just really we just need to work together as communities and reach out to other communities that have been affected so that we can um, really make you know take this message home to our legislatures that we need this funding we we just can't I know you can't either even begin to figure out how you're going to pay for all of that you know manpower and materials. Um, so that that is the main thing is just working with 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 Paul and um, Natalie yeah. and Joe and everybody yeah. to kind of to kind of get some sort of bill in before before the June thirtieth so we can uh, we can recover a bit. Um, and you know, Trevor, oh. honestly, that's my you know, um, the, n having been through Hurricane Irene twenty eleven and knowing that the appropriation from the state arrived in our town hall at, in 2018, um, <laughs> uh, you know, the, 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 the promise of just doing it through the state house um, yeah. just does not hold much allure for me. Um, um, that's all we have. Uh, they're, they're, yeah, but they still, will we can't, come through. Still, yeah, it will. They'll come through. We have to say right now we have $8.6 million between the two of us that we need to get immediately they need to do this they did it for the farmers they can do it for us there's the berkshires have put they were going to do a separate bill for the berkshires and they yep. they stopped that so that they could do a combined bill but they should be able to do this right away based on our mema numbers right now yeah and we should be getting we should make sure you get your 3.9 and we get our 4.7 and then we move to the next stage this is this is only to get us you know Best whole open. again in the sense that you can open the roads and they're stable but that doesn't mean they're even going to make it through the winter you yep. know that's that's the right. next phase exactly. and and that's what's really well, we have a few I, short I mean, months yeah, a few short months to get the road stable for winter. I mean, we're and, uh, both highway departments need to be they should work together yeah. so that we can figure out what we're going to do for the winter, because these fixes are not winter eyes fixes. Mm -hmm. And um, and that's why we're hoping that because it's July, we can work through NRCS and use the EWP program to get most of the stuff in by December and. Um, and that, that will be our worst roads, mm -hmm. you know, our worst condition roads at this so point. In, in the last 30 seconds, does Conway have any other questions they have for us? <laughs> yeah. yeah. I'm sorry to make you. Oh, no, that, that, that's, um, we just, you know, one is just like a nuts and bolts question about how do we get started with the conservation district application? And, um, and, and I, you know, I, if, if, well, if it that. Sounds like, it sounds like Ver Vernique is getting the, um, um, NRCS out there, Darren Davis EW. out there to do the damage survey um, report, and that will and that will indicate to you whether how many projects you have that are EWP eligible, <clears throat> and that is going to be able to you're going to do a much better fix with the EWP than what just to stabilize it and get it open. It's the next step, and then you got to look at the whole picture, like. We're going to apply for a 604B planning grant through to DP to look at the water that comes down on River Road because we have the whole River Road. There's at least two or three spots that are sinking and that we're really devastated with runoff from Pine Nook Road on the Connecticut River side. And then we have all this silt uh, going into the Deerfield River that's going into Long Island Sound. So we hope to get an impaired river definition so that 
for the Deerfield River from Stillwater Bridge down to the mouth of the Connecticut based on sewage coming in from Greenfield's plant in the Green River and then dumping it into Deerfield and then all our silt. So, Carolyn, is there any possibility that you can take this offline and talk to yes. Barry? Well, no, or, they or wanted Phil? to know. Yeah. Well, I understand that. It's just yeah. that we've got somebody calling in from Colorado that we need to deal oh, with. Oh, yeah. Okay. And, um, you know. But anyway, it, it, it seems like it's complicated, but you need to look at the big picture. And that's your three to five year window. And you just can't get depressed about it because that's just what it costs um, to do it at not taxpayer dollars let's let's keep in touch let's yeah let's do that work together to try and get and for Nick, you can just call me and i we can i can try to sort it out i'll, I'll make sure that darren has your phone number and stuff like that thank you very much i really appreciate it thank you to carolyn trevor thank yeah. you so much oh you're welcome yeah no we'll any we'll any time you have together, a question please. you can call yeah. me i mean thank you chris i've been just doing this for a while so yeah. I know yeah. Paul anyway. <laughs> now it's a lot different than 2005. Uh, thanks yes. so much. Hey, thanks Good guys. night, guys. We'll see you yeah. soon. Good night. All right. Good night. Good night. Thank Appreciate you. It.